how we do in class uh, today, we're going to talk about the um, uh, another drug in the line of the uh, when they poison themselves, and that would be uh, syrup of epicac. Now, I will tell you that you still see this question on the test because there are some places that still do this barbaric ritual. Um, um, but with me saying that, I want to give you the information. You can decide for yourself. Um, so what what it is, is Epicac actually activates the ability to throw up. Um, and, and it triggers that, that stimulus, okay? Uh, it's, it, it, it's used to make the patient throw up. So if they've taken some pills, we can have them throw that up so that it doesn't absorb into the, into the, um, the bloodstream uh, via the, the GI tract. All right. So again, it's Epicac syrup and it is an emetic. It is designed to make somebody throw up. Okay. It makes the brain stem and the gastric mucosa. It helps that to produce vomiting. Okay. Uh, usually you'll have them drink it. Uh, five to 35 minutes later, you're going to have somebody start to throw up and they're going to have that lovely sensation for somewhere around the 20 to 25 minute mark once it does activate. Okay. Um, now again, it's an aspiration nightmare. Okay. But it does again, what it does though, if you've got pills, they just have freshly taken the pills within 15 minutes, they may advise you to do that, to, to actually give the epicic syrup. Um, my problem with it is, is again, is boy, you run the risk of aspiration and, uh, it's an extremely dangerous thing to do. Um, and again, by the way, they're going to retch for 20 to 25 minutes. That is the cardiovascular effects of that is horrific. Um, and so that's why a lot of the, the EMS agencies today do not use it. Okay. And by the way, after about 15 minutes, you got to remember that it's probably the pills have gone through the stomach. They've broken down uh, somewhere around the 30 minute mark is when that's going to happen. And they go and it goes through the goes through the junctions and goes into the, the duodenum. And at that point, absorption is already beginning. Remember, tablets were made to start breaking down and getting into the system. They don't sit around and hang around. And by the time we decide to give it, we're probably already too late. So again, uh, it, it can cause some confusion, and that's usually because of the side effects because they brady down, because they're throwing up so hard that their blood pressure drops and, and it decreases the gastric motility. Remember that it, it's supposed to induce vomiting, but again, it can also cause diarrhea along with that. So uh, guys, uh, if they've had a strong acid or base or petroleums, again, just like in your your activated charcoal, it doesn't work that well. Okay, matter of fact, it doesn't work at all. We, Truth be known, we don't want them throwing it up because whatever effect they had going down is now going to have the same effect coming back up. Okay, so anti-emetic poisonings are usually the pheothiazine group. Um, so if they've taken a whole bunch of Zofran, uh, PO, uh, Fenugrin tablets, it's not really going to work, okay? And uh, uh, Thorazine's uh, not going to work, okay? Any patient that can't protect their own airway, we don't use Epicac, okay? Um, we just don't do it. We don't. It's a vomiting mess. We don't want to do it. If they've got a history of cardiac disease, again, throwing up puts a severe amount of stress on the body. Uh, to get it up the first time is fine. 20 minutes of it, horrible. We don't want to do it, okay? So, uh, by the way, don't give them activated charcoal and then decide to give them Epicac. It's not going to work because the Epicac is going to ab get absorbed by the activated charcoal. Doesn't work, guys. So, guys, remember that the Epicac is cardiotoxic. It does cause damage to the heart. Um, don't confuse it, by the way, with Epicac fluid extract. That is 14 times more powerful, and uh, you're probably going to end up killing them, okay? Um, and again, if the water is not tolerated by the patient, you can substitute uh, carbonated beverages, juices, anything except milk. Uh, milk it doesn't play good with, okay? So any other fluid usually is okay to give it with. Um, again, your emesis might precipitate a convulsion because, again, they continue to retch because they cause vagal tone. Uh, when you do retch, it's going to slow your heart rate down. It's going to probably drop your blood pressure. Again, not very good. We usually give the whole vial, which is 30 milliliters. It's, uh, um, it's usually for the adult patient. The 15 liter, milliliters is usually for the pediatric patient. 
and we usually follow that that with 16 ounces of water uh guys don't get in a hurry to give a second dose okay trust me if the first one doesn't work the second one is not going to it's going to throw up and you're going to throw up everywhere okay so again uh again 10 milliliters is what you're going to use for the uh, child the less than one year 50 and to be blunt i don't know if you're going to get it down to less than one year old uh one to eight years of age usually use half the dose 50 milliliters and again uh epicac uh they they usually do not to do too well with it again you're gonna have to make sure that you've got a physician's order to do this most of the time and a lot of places nowadays will say no don't do that uh just get them here and we'll deal with the toxic the toxidrome syndrome once we get there okay uh, again, the pregnancy class C uh, is not well established. Uh, again, it, they're not really sure whether it crosses the barrier or not. All right, folks, uh, that's going to do it for Epicac. I will tell you again, Epicac is not really used in EMS much anymore. You might see some docs actually still prescribe it in the emergency room. Um, but most of the time, if we want their stomach pumped out, again, we, we drop an orogastric tube and we lavage it. We, that's what we, how we usually handle it. All right. We're going to talk to you guys later, and uh, remember, no puking. See ya.